feel like inverse kinematics is a topic that for a lot of people is kind of intimidating. It's a bit notorious for being the uh, evil twin brother to forward kinematics that a lot of people sort of just will plug in the formulas and set it and forget it um, rather than really take the time to understand it. And I mean, I've, I've done that too. It's kind of been my approach for a while to inverse kinematics. Um, but you can actually approach it with some basic high school math and I don't know. I feel like I'm thinking about it in a way now that is helpful to me. So I just wanted to share this idea and hopefully it'll help some people. So the trick is to think about this triangle. And we know the lengths of this green and red line. These are the lengths of the linkages. So we can define them ahead of time, right? And we know what they are. And we don't know this distance. Well, this distance is changing, but we actually do know this distance, right? Because we are specifying where the target point should be. And we know the location of the shoulder point. So you can think about like, we know the point where the hand should be and where the shoulder should be. So we know all three lengths of this triangle. So we can then use that to find any angle of the triangle we want using the law of cosines. And just for a quick proof of concept, if I said, gave you this triangle, you could tell me what this point was, right? Because you know what this length is. So if I just gave you, say, this angle here, you could tell me the position of the elbow. Because you just take the shoulder and then add, you know, whatever this length is times the cosine of this angle. And then for the y component, you would do this length times the sine of this angle. So if we just know this angle, then we're in business. So right now we're looking at the up arm configuration versus the down arm. And you do have to consider these separately, uh, separate cases for inverse kinematics. So first let's take a look at the up arm. So we wanna find the angle between this green line, this link one, and the x axis, this angle here, so that we can then apply it and find the position of the elbow. So we know this triangle and so we could use the law of cosines to find this angle, A. And then we could just add this angle, which we can find from this triangle. And to find this angle, we can just use the inverse tangent of this over this. This would be like by minus ay over uh, bx minus ax, inverse tangent of that. That'll give us this angle. Law of cosines from this triangle, we can get this angle. Add those two angles up, and you'll get this angle here, and then you can find point C. And that's actually exactly how this simulation works. And so this might be more beneficial for animators and game developers as an approach, because in robotics, knowing the point C might not be your main priority. It might be more about knowing the angles. So while I think this method still gives you a good idea of like a way to approach it, and of course, once you have the position of C, you could always find the angles from there. But I think by that point, it's no longer probably an efficient method of calculating the angles. So for robotics, I think, you know, stick with the standard approach which the standard approach does use a lot of cosines, so this isn't like earth shattering, but I just felt like this was a kind of cool way of looking at this. 
All right, so let's do the down arm now. So for the down arm, we again can find angle A using the law of cosines. And then if we want to find this angle between AC and the horizontal, we can just use the triangle formed by AC and the horizontal. And again, do the inverse tangent. Um, Actually, no, we can't, right? Because we don't know C yet. <laughs> so we can't do that. But what we can do is we can find the angle here, this complete angle from AB to the horizontal. And once we find that angle, we can subtract angle A here that we find from the law of cosines from this angle that we find from the inverse tangent. So hopefully that makes sense. I kind of kind of misspoke there for a second with saying that we could do uh, inverse tangent with this white triangle down here. We can't, right? Because we don't know the position of C is what we're trying to find. So we can instead use A, B, this triangle, right? A, B, and the horizontal. We could find this angle and then subtract this angle and that'll give us this angle and then we can find C and that's basically it so that's the up and the down configuration inverse kinematics in 2D uh, I hope that is a helpful way of thinking about this um, and yeah thanks for watching